Good morning, internet land. It's another great day in the Coconino National Forest, overlooking the San Francisco peaks. And I decided I'd go out on a nice forest road ride today. So I'm about to take this almost stock CSC RX4 out to a cinder pit. Um, so before we head out there, I'd like to show you the few things that I've put on there that make it not stock. But besides that, the bike is totally stock. Um, I upgraded the skid plate. This is not the standard skid plate that's put on there. Um, the foot pegs, I took out the rubber inserts that come with it for highway riding. And then also because these little knobbies that you see right here were not that uh, pronounced or sharp, I just took a metal file to them. They're aluminum, uh, so it's really easy to take a steel file, grate them down, so they're nice and sharp now and hold my boots. Um, I've also upgraded the lights right here um, to have some auxiliary lights. We don't need to worry about that today. I've put on a seat pad because I am six foot two and I have a 34 inch inseam and so I need a little bit extra height. Plus, when you do three, four, 500 mile days, you want a nice cushiony seat pad. I've also got a tank bag on there. Um, and then, yeah, I decided to go for the plastic rear boxes. But besides that, the dang thing is stock. Um, running the stock tires, 3,000 miles on them. Uh, probably got a thousand of road left, maybe 800 of off-road left. Um, so not too much left there, and then we can do the same thing to the back here. Worn down pretty gosh darn good. Again, maybe only a thousand, thousand miles left on road. Um, but I'm about to do something stupid. I'm going to take it to a cinder pit. And I'm going to show you guys what it's like to ride the CSC RX4 on some decently rough cinder pit terrain. Um, I'm expecting to crash more than once today. Uh, to give you an idea of what these stock tires are like. This is a classic gravel road, a good gravel road around Coconino National Forest. Um, you can see it has about half an inch of cinders down there. Um, and it gets squirrely on here. Um, if I try to ride on the track, it's a little bit better, but quite squirrely on those cinders. Um, so I can only imagine when I'm hitting four or five inch deep cinders out at the cinder pit, it's gonna be pretty gush darn bad. Um, so let's see how hard I can push this bike, what it does out at this cinder pit. Um, but before we do that, let me go over a couple things that I do before I do any serious off-road riding on the bike. All right, so the first thing I always do before I do any more serious off-road riding is uh, take that pressure down. So always have a pressure gauge on you. So currently I'm sitting in about 30 PSI. I'm going to take that down all the way to about 22 PSI or so. So. There we go. About 20 PSI or so. I've gotten good at that. Uh, we're going to do the same thing to our rear tire. So let's see if my valve stem is in the right place. Oh, look at that. It is. Hooray. So what pressure was I running coming out here? Again, about 32, 34. We're gonna drop that down to about 25. Get down, all right, 20, 24 on the nose. All right, so first thing you do before any serious off-road running, at least on stock tires, and this is for any 4x4 or any motorcycle riding whatsoever off-road, uh, air down. Um, you get a little bit more traction off of your tires, a little bit more cushion off of them, so step number one. Step number two, if your bike is able to do this, is to adjust your suspension. So I'm going to make it nice and loose. So I'll show you on the RX4 how we do that. Relatively simple. Suspension, got the plus minus, more or less rebound. So I can get it to focus here. There it goes. So all I do is take my screwdriver, put it down there. It's set the 12. I'm just gonna bring it down. Two, three, and four to eight is where I like to sit because I'm decently heavy. One, two, three, and four, eight on either side. And then the final thing we're going to adjust is going to be our rear suspension. A little bit hard to find. Definitely can't do it <laughs> uh, right after you rode the bike because the exhaust is going to be extremely hot and burn you. Um, however, the bike has cooled off for a couple minutes, so you see that little red 
bugger in there. I want to turn that up too fast. I want it to rebound pretty gosh darn quickly for me. So I'm just going to stick my screwdriver in there. And one, two, three, four. And I like to get this all the way as fast as I can get it. So there we go. So to start off the video, I'm pointing the camera down so you guys can see how the motorcycle is reacting to the rolls that I'm taking on the outside of the cinder pit. As you can see, the motorcycle uh, doesn't have that much suspension, only about five inches in the front and the rear. So if you're going to be doing rolls like this or harder terrain, you really got to stand up. You really got to use your legs as an extra suspension and throw that weight forward and back. If you're a mountain bike rider at all, it's the exact same thing as riding almost a hard tail mountain bike. You gotta really know how to throw your weight, when to accelerate, when to decelerate, not break before hitting anything big or anything else like that. So just in a few rolls and I'm gonna cruise around a little bit and eventually we'll get over to the cinders. In fact, right up ahead up here is going to be a really deep cinder part, deepest around there. It's eight inches to 12 inches of cinders and surprisingly, the bike holds on pretty well. I didn't go too fast because I ended up not wanting to crash and you can see a few different times where I'm jerking the handlebars left and right because the back tire is slipping out on me. It was just constantly slipping out and that really freaked me out, got my adrenaline going so I just decided not to push the bike too hard because I didn't have any buddies with me and I'm outside of Flagstaff where I live by a good 20 or 30 minute drive and so medical help would be decently far away. So didn't want to break anything, didn't want to do anything, no one else was out there. so. Because of that, not pushing myself too hard. So, something that I noticed with these tires, they slip out really easily. So anytime I was trying to take a turn, you could see me slowing down a good bit. Here's that deep cinder part I was telling you about. Um, so rather than turn as I go up these cinders, I'm aiming my bike so I can just go straight as I go up them and hold on to my traction. So I'm about to climb this little hill real quick, thinking about it, contemplating it, and realizing that my camera is pointed pretty drastically down. So I'm gonna tilt it back up here. So bada bam, about to go up this deep cinder hill. And the bike handles pretty gosh darn well. I mean, as long as you're not hitting anything with super hard rocky terrain, you're pretty good. I have bottomed out the suspension, but not a single time while I was out here today did I bottom out the suspension because it was such a smooth track. Now you start hitting six inch to one foot drops, uh, you don't land them correctly. You start hitting big rollovers, you know, seven inch boulders that you need to get the bike over and you don't throttle right. Yeah, your suspension is going to bottom out. Uh, especially if you don't have it pre-dialed right. So just make sure that you dial in that suspension and again, know how to ride. If this is, my main thing that I'm telling everybody, if, if this is your first adventure bike, it's a great first adventure bike. Just know that in two years, you're going to want a bigger bike. Uh, as soon as you get your, your, your rides down and then your skill set down, you're gonna want something you can push just a little bit harder. However, this is a great entry level bike. I mean, extremely good. So I just went around and I'm about to hit some pretty big rolls up ahead here. You're going to see the bike really go up and down. So I'm standing up on the bike. I'm leaning back, uh, butts over almost the back seat. And I am just letting the bike roll underneath me and using my suspension, uh, using my legs as suspension and using my arms as, as much suspension as I can get. So almost throwing the bike forward over it just as you would a mountain bike. And it does extremely well. I mean, check this out. And then you do a hoo ma yahoo, and you go over these. So it does actually pretty gosh darn good here. And uh, later in the video, you're going to see a few hill climbs. Uh, this GoPro really doesn't show how steep the hills are. Uh, they were about 45 to 60 degrees or so, uh, more than 45, I would say 60, 60 to 70 degree hills or so, the climbs, uh, it's just this wide angle lens in the GoPro really makes things look uh, much smaller, um, makes you feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, the speedometer is showing zero miles per hour because on this model, the RX-4, when you turn on, or when you turn off your automatic braking system, your ABS, the speedometer turns off as well. Horrible quality to have, but so goes Chinese manufacturing and Chinese wiring. There is a way that you can rewire it. 
uh, but then it, when you rewire it, you have to turn off the bike and turn the bike back on every seat. I almost slipped out right there. Every single time you uh, to turn on or off the ABS in order to disengage the computer and reset the computer, and that's how it knows to engage the ABS. Uh, so you have to flick the switch, turn off the bike, turn it back on, then your speedometer will work and the ABS will be off. And then if you want to turn the ABS back on, you have to flick the switch, turn off the bike, turn back on the bike, and then boom, you have the speedometer and you have ABS on. I didn't want to deal with that, so instead it's wired this way where the automatic braking system is off. Anywho, here's a pretty steep hill. Again, doesn't look that steep. But that ending part right there is at least 60 degrees. And then going back to these rolls over here. I just rode around for a few minutes. I did ride for like two hours around this pit. I just didn't want to record all of it. Uh, I did record a good bit more, but I didn't realize that I was in a uh, stop motion. And so that ended up, the video did not come out well. But just cruising back to Flagstaff now. Anywho, how it did was pretty gosh darn fantastic, given that the stock tires are what they are. I'm definitely looking forward to getting the Shinko 805s on there but I'm not going to put them on until these tires are worn down because that would be a waste of a tire, a waste of product, and I'm not a wasteful person. So you flick the switch and boom, speedometer's back on. But anywho, I think it felt, I felt that it did pretty well. It was squirrely, almost crashed a couple different times. Uh, not in this video, but in other, other parts of my ride. But it handled pretty gosh darn well. I was really impressed. Probably the funnest riding that I've done on the bike in comparison to down in Sedona, where it's very rocky, which this bike does not like rocky terrain. But the smooth awesomeness, I absolutely love it. Still loving the ARCs 4. I know this wasn't the best video in the world, but hey, I'm the only one posting videos, so you're going to have to deal with it. Anywho, hope you all are having a good day. Hope you continue having a good day or night if you're a night owl. Uh, if it's 3 a.m. and you're watching this, go to bed. Anywho, everybody have a good day, uh, and I'll catch you all another time.